Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and thank you for tuning in. It's been a while since I've done a video on sex and or sexual attraction and behaviors. I believe the last one I did was back in late January, if I'm not mistaken, unless you count the video I did in late April regarding disturbing STD figures. In any case, in plenty of videos, I've covered the ways that men can improve their sexual market value with women, and not just financially, but also with regards to looks. Uh, in fact, more so with regards to looks. I've discussed the ideal amount of facial hair, body fat percentage, muscle mass, etc all supported by research. I feel that this topic is valuable because reproduction is a biological imperative for all organisms. And I've also discussed the positive effect that sex and committed loving relationships have on a man's well-being, health, and longevity. It all boils down to my classic motto, fit, formidable, and fantastic. You know, go F yourself. And of course, since 91.3% of my audience is male, according to my channel analytics, I often do videos geared toward that demographic. Now, some new research published this past May in the peer-reviewed journal PLOS One uh, shed some light on male attractiveness and sex. Uh, while the findings may or may not shock you, I feel that they are important to consider for more than one reason. So guys, please take heed. The researchers set out to explore the association between a man's perceived attractiveness and condom use with his female sexual partners. Also, whether or not perceived attractiveness played any role in perceived health status, such as with STDs. The final sample size of the study was 480 English-speaking women in Britain, aged from 18 to 32 years, who are sexually active with men. Initially, there were 574 participants, but 94 were disqualified for not completing the study or for being attracted to women. So it would appear that this study specifically focused on heterosexual women. Factors that were assessed and controlled for were age, nation of birth, occupation, self-perceived attractiveness, satisfaction with one's sex life, relationship status, lifetime number of sexual partners, STD status, both past and present, allergies to condom materials, condom use, as well as, oddly, how well they believe they could identify whether a man had an STD without actually asking him. The biggest hoe, I mean, sexually liberated woman of them all was a 32-year-old single British woman who had slept with a total of 30 men and had used condoms between 31 and 50% of the uh, time. Uh, she was followed close second by two Canadian uh, women living in Britain aged 22 and 20 respectively uh, who had already slept with 25 men each. Uh, one used condoms 91 to 100% of the time and the other 51 to 70% of the time. But both engaged in unprotected sex with more than two men within the last six months. And the number of lifetime partners continues down from there. 20, 18, 17, 16, 15, etc. Uh, many of these women only being in their late teens to early 20s. In fact, 40 of the women have had 10 or more sexual partners and 6 of them have had uh, 20 or more. Uh, in any case, you can browse the full list in all of its degeneracy under the section titled Supporting Information after the Conclusions section. Uh, it is in downloadable Excel format and I've linked to the full paper at my blog. In any case, the women were then asked to rate the attractiveness of 20 different men and for each, confirm how likely they'd be, if they were single, to sleep with each of the 20 men. Moreover, how likely they'd be to use a condom with each of those men. They were also asked to determine how likely they believed that each man was to be carrying an STD. And when it came to condom use, researchers also controlled for whether or not the man himself wanted, theoretically, to use a condom. To provide some sample scenarios presented to the women, in quotes, getting him so sexually excited that he agreed to have sex without the condom, or telling him how upset you would be if you did not have sex because you did not have a condom, or reassuring him that you were clean so that he would have sex without a condom, and even engaging in condom sabotage, in quotes, and preventing him from getting a condom by staying on top of him. And those were just five of the scenarios. Worse yet, half of the women in the study actually reported using at least 
one of those tactics on their male sexual partners. The most common one being getting him really aroused and then starting to have sex without a condom, a tactic used by 129 of the participants, which is more than a quarter. What the researchers found was that the more attractive a man was considered to be by the women, the more likely that they were to have sex with him and the less likely they were to use condoms. Whereas perceived attractiveness played no significant role on whether or not a woman thought a man had an STD. But shockingly, even if a woman believed a man to have an STD, that did not deter her from sleeping with him. However, the more attractive that a woman perceived herself to be, the more likely she was to believe that the men overall were infected with something. Now, while only one out of the 480 women believed that they currently had an STD, the key word there being believed, uh, 20 of the women confirmed that they have had at least one STD in the past. So guys, you need to keep this data in mind. As you improve your appearance by manner of grooming, fitness, dress, etc., you can in turn attract more female attention. And the more attractive that you become, the more likely that women will be to sleep with you and the more likely they will also be to do so without protection. Uh, even if you want to use it. And this includes using devious methods. So the risks and rewards of being attractive are quite intertwined when it comes to women. Thus, you need to keep your wits about you. For example, don't get drunk, thus lowering your inhibitions. Better yet, this is something, I, and this is something I strongly advise actually, save sex for a dedicated monogamous relationship. Uh, because it isn't just STDs that you need to worry about, it's also knocking someone up. Hell, even better yet, uh, why not save it for marriage? Uh, something in hindsight that I wish I had done, especially now after converting to Catholicism. But I'll save that sort of discussion for another time. Some of my male viewers have requested it, uh, feeling bad about their own sexual experience or, or lack thereof. Uh, but I will say this, there's nothing to be ashamed of about being a virgin. Just remember, a uh, one way to combat degeneracy is to not engage in degeneracy yourself. Anyway, leave your thoughts and comments below and don't forget to like and share this video if you found it interesting. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not already and press the bell button for notifications and check back here weekly. All three avenues will help ensure that you do not miss any new content from me. Furthermore, check out the video description for links to my products and services as well as my affiliate links such as Amazon and other ways that you can show your support to me and my channel if you genuinely enjoy and get use from what I provide here. And that includes an array of my science-based training and nutrition ebooks, which can help you get results like those seen on my clients pictured here. My ebooks and affiliate links are great ways to support me and my channel. And on that note, clearly I am still here on YouTube. In fact, I have not received a decision regarding the appeal that was filed for my music channel yet. Uh, and so far, BitChute has uh, been disappointing. My new account remains open, but I cannot seem to get any of my videos to properly upload. They all seem to get stuck in processing whenever I try, nor can I get certain things uh, such as my profile image to actually populate properly. It's very frustrating to say the least. Uh, the site seems incredibly glitchy. So, I am open to suggestions like other online video hosting platforms that are recommended. Also, as many of you know, I am basically demonetized here. So despite all of my work, I might see like $100 every three to four months uh, from what ads do roll here on this channel. YouTube also fails to promote my videos, uh, which is a bit disheartening considering that I make these for folks to enjoy, uh, not to collect dust while going relatively unnoticed. Uh, and if I did get BitChute to finally work properly, they do not offer ad revenue at all. So, in light of these issues, here's how you can assist uh, if you appreciate my content. And by doing so, you souping power from YouTube. One, please share my videos if you feel they're worth sharing helping me bypass YouTube's selective algorithm and shadow ban by promoting my work yourselves. You can do so by word of mouth, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Two, 
please consider contributing to my Patreon, or if you distrust Patreon, to my new Subscribestar account. The latter was recommended to me by uh, some viewers recently. I also have a PayPal for direct contributions, um, if you prefer that. And those three methods are listed and linked below in the description and in my pinned comment. And YouTube will receive nothing from those methods, unlike with their ads or pledges made during uh, live streams where they inevitably take a cut. Even just $1 a month would be greatly appreciated and highly effective. Look at it this way. Uh, if each or most of my regular viewers contributed just $1 a month, that would add up with significance. And the funds can go toward replacing equipment as needed, such as my computer, mic, or camera, uh, or even just paying for an alternative method of video hosting uh, should something happen here, especially since BitChute continues to disappoint. For example, I could purchase a subscription to host my videos on, say, Dropbox, and then directly stream them uh, to my Subscribestar via Dropbox, as that option does exist. But alas, spending money uh, on my content while it brings next to nothing in is not a wise financial decision, as I'm sure you all can understand. Your contributions will also give me a little something uh, for my time and efforts. Again, all for as little as just $1 a month, you know, 25 cents a week. Uh, anyway, thank you all for your support, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.